Good morning and welcome to our assembly this morning. I want to start off our assembly by thanking you uh, for how well you have coped with the remote learning process. Thank you for the way that you've engaged in lessons and thank you for how hard you have worked. Uh, the feedback I've had from staff and pupils alike is that it, it's been a very constructive and helpful process. So well done so far. Uh, and uh, in particular, I'd like to thank the staff uh, who have made it possible, um, particularly IT, um, because it's not been an easy task by any stretch of the imagination. I think it's fair to say that we're living through unprecedented times. Um, I think if I look back, and just over a month ago, uh, I was working with governors to consider the skills future, um, and I was incredibly excited by our proposed new extensive building project. Um, I was very excited by the fact that we would have record number of students in September. And I was certainly hoping at least uh, that the upper sixth and the fifth form would be achieving the highest ever academic results in the school's history. I'm sure you were too. If you are in the sixth form, you probably received lots of university offers and that you were uh, thinking about how much work you had to do uh, between now and the summer examinations. That was until our lives as UK citizens changed forever with the appearance of a small microscopic semblance of organic material. And it appears that the coronavirus has changed the way we live in our day-to-day -day lives at present and quite possibly for into the future. Having lived through the past couple of weeks where our hopes and plans have changed or, or certainly been put on hold and particularly for those taking public examinations, I think I as a headmaster have, have been forced to leave my comfort zone and certainly in the way that myself and the senior team have, have led Bloxham it's been challenging and when I was asked to do this assembly I, I did sit down and, and I reflected yesterday um, about what's happened in the past couple of weeks and indeed in part part of my own understanding of the way that I have led as a head through this crisis. I think when you reach a position of leadership I think it's bound by context um, no two things are the same and I think it's practiced by different people in different situations at different times. My normal job of, as a headmaster is, is, is where I try to empower students, where I try to give colleagues resources, where I look after finances, um, where I handle pastoral concerns, where I, where I lead staff reviews and oversee building works and meet lots of people and promote the school and the wider public. And, and for one or two of you in Upper Sixth, I even teach your lessons. But one thing surprised me, and it sort of caught me a little bit off guard um, over the past few weeks, and, and, and that is the depth of feeling of emotion that I have had uh, when leading the school. And that shocked me, because I wouldn't say I'm a particularly emotional person. We're living through a crisis like we've never seen before in our lifetimes. I certainly haven't experienced it. I think people are dying. People are losing their jobs. And most people face an uncertain future. Economically, the country has taken a massive hit. But it's really interesting when I reflect on emotion because I think with emotion, there's always been suspicion in our culture that there's something wrong with having emotions. We in the UK talk about having a stiff upper lip, not displaying outward signs of emotion. And I've certainly worked with colleagues who have mistaken kindness for weakness and, and who have been scared to show emotions through decision making for, for fear of appearing to be irrational. But I think there's something if we remove emotion from our leadership or our, our decision making process. And I think you do that at your peril, because what I have discovered over the past few weeks is at the heart of our community lies precious, precious relationships with each other as, as pupils or with parents and or bloxamists and, and colleagues. And these relationships are strongly influenced by emotion. 
I think emotions do have a part to play in character development and, and in leadership decisions. Uh, I think our, our community must be aware of the influence and function of those emotions. One of the things we try to do at school is, is to help teach you to have emotional intelligence. And I think emotion should be understood as something that is inherent to our characters and not separate to them. So why am I talking to you about emotions? It seems like a strange subject to talk to you about when there's so much going on in the world. And I think it's probably because a lot of you are emotional at this moment in time and your emotions are raw and you're trying to make sense of them. I suspect a lot of you have a sense of frustration at having your liberty restricted by the current lockdown situation. Um, particularly when the Easter holidays are just around the corner and you can't do what you want to do. Perhaps your emotions are a sense of disappointment um, that, that you can't be with your friends, uh, whether that's at school or elsewhere. Maybe it's disappointment that you've been looking forward to that school trip. You've been training with Mr. Darren uh, to go to Morocco and you've been counting down the days for months and weeks. Or perhaps you're feeling a bit bewildered as to what the future will now hold now that you've no examinations to sit. What does it mean to have uh, assessed coursework? What does it mean to have non-assessed material? What does it mean um, for you and your grades and your future? And perhaps with that comes a great deal of fear of not knowing what, what will happen next. Um, I think that's possibly both in our own individual lives, but also in society as a whole. Perhaps there's even sadness because people you know are affected by the coronavirus. I've discovered over the past few weeks that actually it's okay to be emotional. It's okay to be emotional in your decision making. And for me, that's been a bit of a journey. For me, it's about being frustrated. And it's about being passionate about boxing. I also feel a distinct sense of loss for the upper sixth that I hope it's not. But this quite possibly might they may never be in school for a normal day again and i also feel angry that people have had their education opportunities disrupted through no fault of their own but equally i've also had some really good emotions i've had emotions by the way we've pulled together i've really been proud by what you have done I have felt supported by the wider community, as I know many of you have been as well. I've been delighted by the way staff have pulled together. And I've been thankful for friends and for family and for health and for provision. And I think we'll look back and talk about the coronavirus. No doubt it will appear in the history books in the future, where the future Mr. Battens uh, will tell us all about how it changed lives and shape the future of this country. And that might be, perhaps, for the better. Because we're going to be locked down. We're going to um, be restricted to our homes. But that's also an opportunity. That's an opportunity to connect with your family, a chance to spend time with them, a chance to get to know them, to see them as people. And maybe, Maybe, just afterwards, the coronavirus, in all this disaster, might also have some benefit. And that's perhaps where we appreciate what we have. The importance of friends, the importance of family, and the gift of hope. So this morning, although things look bleak outside, although things look desperate in society at present, there is hope. And we will get through this. I thank you for listening. And I wish you all a very good day and a very good Easter. Thank you.